Hello, everyone. Good night. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. How's everyone doing? Doing good? Okay. Yes. Nice. Thanks, thank you. Doing good. We have section two to review today. It's great. We have a couple exercises. Let me share the agenda. So the reason we are reviewing section number two uh, today is because I really wanted to do a good explanation on the down. So we took a little bit more time with that. Um, so as you can see, we will be reviewing these topics today. Topics uh, from causation until giving solutions. And the good thing is that this last a uh, few sections here for today are not really topics, they are exercises. So we'll go over that real quick and you will be able to complete that on the platform as well. Um, and we'll review some interesting vocabulary as well as some interesting topics. Um, the main topic being prepositions and passive voice. Does anyone know what the passive voice is? Uh, I don't remember the past voice. <laughs> no worries. <Again. laughs> oh. That's okay. That's why we will um, review it today, right? Okay. We'll review it today. The passive voice, you'll see that it's quite simple. It's very simple. Uh, it's just changing the order of a sentence, basically. And we'll oh. compare so you can see the difference. Okay. So let's see an example. We can scroll this way and we'll see an example. Okay. When we're talking about the passive voice, we are inverting or moving the order of the sentence. I personally am not big on giving um, formulas to the tenses. No, yo personalmente no me gusta mucho darle fórmulas um, okay. for the sentences, just because I don't want you thinking about the formula when you're talking. Um, I want you to feel it be natural. Um, so we will review examples instead. So when you are talking to someone, just life every day, uh, you would say, for example, um, and when we're talking about the passive voice, we are usually talking uh, about two things happening or something that caused something else to happen. So the cause of something or something being done, something that happened, right? So you can say that you are doing homework, right? You are doing something, okay. right? But if you talk in the passive voice, now the passive voice, we are inverting the order of the sentence. We are saying the same thing, the exact same thing, but inverted. So the homework is being done by me. Right? I am doing homework or you are doing homework is being done by you, if we're talking about you, right? Let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, the homework's being done by you. You are doing homework or the homework's being done by you. So this way of talking, the passive voice, you won't really hear it being used every day. Um, it's mostly used to explain why something happened, as we will see in the examples, um, to explain the cause of something, or um, maybe if you're reading like a very old book or, look, uh, or watching a very old movie or series, because they used to talk like this. We don't talk like this anymore. Um, so you can see it used in old language 
or when you are explaining the cost of something. You can also see it be used uh, in very professional texts, so scientific texts, or maybe in the newspaper, you might see this type of language being used in the passive voice, but in everyday casual conversations, not so much. No. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. perfect. All right, so I see that we already have the majority of people and I think we're good to um, get started reviewing some examples. So we can see some additional comparisons between the passive voice and the active voice. The topic specifically that we are going to be reviewing is passive with prepositions. So prepositions are, for example, by, because of, through, due to. This explain causes, this explain causation. And this uh, connects two sentences, right? In this examples, we are explaining why something happens. Let's review the first, uh, well, let's review all of the examples. Then you can tell me if there's any vocabulary that you don't know, and then we'll see how that would sound in the active voice, okay? Okay. All right. Let me see if I'm sharing my audio. I think I'm not. Okay, now you should be able to hear it. With prepositions. Present continuous passive. The air is being polluted by fumes from cars and trucks. City streets are being damaged as a result of heavy traffic. Present perfect passive. The roadways have been jammed because of people's dependence on cars. Many parks have been lost through overbuilding. The homeless have been displaced due to overcrowding in city shelters. All right, before we move on, before we continue, are there any words that you don't know? Overcrowding. Overcrowding. Does anybody know what overcrowding is? No, overcrowding and shelters. Yeah. So a shelter is a place where uh, people go where when they don't have anywhere to go. So maybe you are homeless. Maybe you don't have a home, a house, or someone to take care of you. So some people need to live in shelters. Um, so a refugio, right? And, um, mm -hmm. right. So the homeless have displaced, they have been displaced from the regular city places. No los dejan estar in the regular spaces or public spaces. Um, and they also can't go to the city shelters. Tampoco pueden ir a los city shelters because they're overcrowding. There are too many people already in mm, the shelters. Yes, I got it. Right? Yes. It's full. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So overcrowding. A crowd is a really big group of people. Yes. But overcrowding is too much. Right. Not one yeah, yeah. more person can be. A lot of. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So uh, that's what that is. Any other word that you don't know? Do you know what polluted is? Uh, like a contamination. Right. La you know? pollution. Yeah. Right. Same word. So air contamination, polluted. The air is polluted. Okay, so let's review. Overbuilding, uh, so that, no, no sé what it means. Overbuilding, so if overcrowding is too many people mm -hmm. that you can't live Over. in a shelter, what's overbuilding? Mm -hmm. It's um, making building, but a lot of building. That's we right. A, we have a lot of building. And, uh -huh. You have way too many. So you can build a lot to the point that's not good. So many parks have mm -hmm. been lost through overbuilding. They built 
so many buildings that we don't have parks anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't have trees anymore. Yeah. Yeah, so not a good thing, right? All yes. right. So all of these sentences can be formed in the active voice or the regular type of conversation that we have. Todas pueden ser escritas in a regular type of communication. And this is just a way to say it. So I would just like to compare the sentences with you so that um, you see that this is the exact same thing that you would say, just written or written in a different way, right? So instead of saying um, the air is being polluted by fumes from cars and trucks, you could say fumes from cars and trucks are, uh, seria have polluted the air, right? Or are polluting the air, air. Since it's being, so it's continuous, it's right now, are polluting the air. City streets are being damaged as a result of heavy traffic. Heavy traffic is damaging city streets. Yeah. So when you think of this sentence, these two sentences sound a lot more natural, right? These two examples sound a lot more like what you would hear every day. That's why I was telling you that the passive voice is more of like a very formal, very unusual type of way to put it, but it is very much used to, to explain causes. All right, let's continue watching the video. Okay. Before we go deep into the topic of passive with prepositions, I will divide the topic in two parts to make it easier for you to understand. Number one, present continuous passive. Number two, present perfect passive. I will begin now with number one. Let me show you how to form the present continuous passive. Subject plus is or are being plus past participle. What does the present continuous passive do? It describes an action that is in progress right now. For example, we may say, too many trees are being cut down right now, these days, or water is being contaminated. Ready for number two? Present perfect passive. This is how to form this tense. Subject plus has or have, been plus past participle. We use present perfect passive to describe something that started before the present. The exact time isn't important. For example, too many trees have been cut down recently or in the last years. In either case, we will add a preposition right after the past participle. We may add by, because of, as a result of, due to, through. Let's then add a preposition to our last example. Too many trees have been cut down because of overbuilding. Note. All right, we'll stop there. Vamos a tener ahí to go into causation. So this is causation vocabulary. These are called prepositions. And this one specifically, you know that there are many prepositions. For example, ¿cuáles son algunas de las primeras que aprendemos? Under, uh, next to, behind, above, right? But these are causation, right? These are uh, prepositions that you will use to explain why something happened. For example, we can say. Alejandra. Yeah. Yes. So, sorry. Uh, causation. Causation. Okay. Causation. Mm -hmm. 
comes from the word cause, right? Ah, uh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Right? Okay, thank you very much. Cause or the reason why. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, for example, you can say, um, a lot of people have lost their jobs due to the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people have lost their jobs due to the pandemic, because of the pandemic. Um, what's interesting is that most of these prepositions can be interchanged. Se pueden intercambiar. They don't really have a rule of when to use it. So you could say, uh, because of the pandemic, you could say by the pandemic. You could say through the pandemic, as a result of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It works with all of them. Not, it will not work all of the time, but most of the time, they can all work. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. But for example, the, I don't. I don't use. I. Uh, in the future, I don't use that through. Do you, as, as a result, yes, because of it, I, through or through, maybe I, I don't I don't feel comfortable use that, that word, but through. because of, as a result of, yes. Yeah, yeah, I know it, they're almost like you could use them as synonyms, right? Um, when you see emails, maybe from corporate people, from executives, or maybe uh, in the newspaper as well, you will see that they use through, uh, but really none of them are more formal than the other. So you would be good with any of them. Okay. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Any questions with how we're doing so far? Hmm. Anyone have any questions or things that they would like to review so far? No. All right, let's go. These prepositions have similar meaning. Remember we have studied passive voice before? So let's make a quick review on the active and passive sentences. Active voice. Air pollution is threatening the health of people. Air pollution is the cause. Is threatening is the verb. The health of people is the object. Number one is air pollution and health of people is number two. So what we do now is exchange one and two, the object and the cause. Then write a preposition, the health of people by air pollution. Notice we left a blank space on the verb. That's because we need to identify the original tense. In this case, it's present continuous and write the verb in that tense. For example, is or are being. Then take the original verb, example, threatened, and make it past participle of it. We will be left out with is or are being plus threatened. All right, as you can see, that's, that was the example that we were reviewing, right? We were reviewing that example on how you just change the order of it. Any questions with how you would change that order? Mm, no. All right. All, all, all time mm -hmm. is the first and the at the end. For example, it's, the first is uh, uh, air pollution. At the end is the hell of the people. All time just is the change. All time, completely. Mostly for the passive voice, yes. There, all, there is always the exception, always ex ex exists the exception, but for the passive voice and active voice, most of the time, yes. That's the, it's not a rule, but that is the a change that so, you're gonna do, yeah. Okay, and all time, yes, we add that being, because is, okay, is being plus 
the trading back in the past. And um, it won't necessarily be the verb be, it could be a different verb, right? It mm. could be any other verb. Uh, this In this example, we are using is being because we have the mm -hmm. verb to be here. Air pollution is threatening, mm -hmm. right? So the health of people, the health of people is being threatened. Um, you mm. could have a different word, right? You could have a different verb, but you know yeah. that you just have to use that in the present continuous. Yeah, yes, but it, it, but the treatment is uh, ing, but in this case, when we use the passive voice, or tiny, the treatment is threatened in, in the in the past. This oh, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. okay, yeah. yes, because you're mm -hmm. changing the tense of the verb. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Excellent. What is the meaning of threatening? Threatened. For example, when um, I am walking in a dangerous area, I feel threatened. When um, you um, live in an area that's not secure, uh, your house may be threatened. So it's to put at risk. Cuando uno está en riesgo, you are threatened. You can also feel threatened. Si alguien, si estás en un lugar donde no te sentís seguro, you could feel threatened. Inseguro, but not damaged. Inseguro. So damaged okay. is to I'm already alive. be attacked. Um, yeah, I'm it could be sort of, sort of amenazado, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, okay. in the security era, threatening is uh, amenazado. Yep. All right. Let's do okay. a quick knowledge check on what we have reviewed so far. Okay. So we have four exercises here. We are going to write them again using the passive voice and the preposition that's here. The preposition, mm -hmm. they give it in uh, here in the parentheses. So we will write the sentences again but in the passive voice. So air pollution is threatening the health of people in urban areas. Who wants to try and write down the example or let's all do it. Everyone mm -hmm. go to the chat, vamos al chat acá de Zoom, here in your bar at the below or above, I'm not sure where it'll be for you. Uh, open the chat and type down Number one, what do you think it will be in the passive voice? Escribamos en el chat cómo creemos que se vería. Uh, sentence mm -hmm. number one and the passive voice. Air pollution is threatening the health of people in urban areas. Everyone can participate. Okay. All right, let's see. Leymar says the health of people in urban areas is being threatened by air pollution. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely right. The health of people in urban areas, at the end of the sentence, comes to the front, comes to the initial part, is being threatened by air pollution. I am agree. So, yes, because. They, they, because he, because Lamar, right? I, I, it's not necessary. I write again. Exactly. I was just going to say that when you agree, we don't say I am agree. We say I agree. I agree. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, the health of people in urban areas is being threatened by air pollution, right? Let's do number two. Let's write in the, sh in the chat, how do you think sentence number two would be in the passive voice. Livestock farms have contaminated soil and underground water. Soil, mm is another word for 
dirt with one difference. Soil is kind of like suelo, but suelo del que se puede cosechar. So when you hear soil, that means fertile land. Suelo que se puede cosechar or that can be used to harvest. Let's see, Ivania says, soil and underground water have been contaminated because of livestock farms. That is absolutely right. Let's write it down. Soil and underground water have been contaminated because of livestock farms. Livestock means ganado. So livestock it's uh, is cows, um, goats, because in Europe they drink a lot of goat milk and goat cheese and whatever. Uh, chickens, livestock, pigs. All right, let's do number three. Maritza wrote down number three. Acid rain, well, the original sentence is the burning of gas, oil, and coal has been created uh, has created, I'm sorry, has created acid rain. And Maritza says, acid rain has been created as a result of the burning of gas, oil, and coal. That is right. So acid rain has been created as a result of the burning of gas, oil, and coal. Excellent. And let's do number four. Who wants to write down number four, which is the use of CFCs in products like hairspray has created a hole in the ozone layer. Who wants to write down number four in the chat? What is coal? Coal is carbon. So there is a difference between coal and charcoal. Creo que todas las mujeres o la mayoría hemos escuchado de esa mascarilla de charcoal, like charcoal mask or charcoal everything at the moment. The difference between charcoal and coal is that coal is um, mined, semina. You get it from the soil, from the dirt, and you mine it. And charcoal is wood that you burn, el carbón que se hace quemando madera. And coal is the mineral. So, number four. Let's do it together. So, the use of CFCs is the reason, right? The use of CFCs, mm -hmm. which is like artificial material uh, and contaminants and whatever, is what is causing the problem. The problem is a hole in mm -hmm. the ozone layer. And where is that in products like hairspray? Uh, so the preposition that we have is through. So what has been created? A hole in the ozone layer. So a hole in the ozone layer has been created through, ah, oh, there we go. We have said here, a hole in the ozone layer has been created through the use of CFCs in products like hers for exactly through the use of CFCs in products like hairspray. Let's see. What do we have here? Do we have a space? Do we have a point? Can anyone tell me what is going on here? Acid rain has been created created, has been created as a result of the burning of gas, oil, and coal. What could we have wrong? Can anyone tell me? Let's see if it's the preposition. No. What could it be? Oh, a hole in the ozone layer. 
I think what, it's what a it comma. Oh. 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 I see what you mean. Before. Before I see what you mean. No, before oil, right? Oil, yes. Let's see. That is right. Those points and commas, man. All right. We figured it out. We had it correct. All right. Anyone have any questions with this exercise? No questions is clear. Cool, perfect. Then we can move on to 2.3, which is aux verbs or auxiliary verbs. This is very short, very quick, very easy. So auxiliary verbs, what are they? Let us go this. to here. Fresh one. So aux verbs or auxiliary verbs, aux verbs for short, they can be if, are, has, and have. When we're talking about is and are, we're not really using it, them as really as um, a verb to be, but as auxiliary verbs in sentences like fresh water is being wasted, right? So we're just okay. explaining, right? It's not like we're saying uh, uh, to be used as a verb to be. It is a verb to be in the sentence, but it is explaining causation again. First, what it is being wasted, right? Something's happening. So um, in some sentences, and this is very quick, esto es un tip, the reduction of aux verbs para sonar más natural, sonar más native. They very rarely connect their sentences. A lot of the time you just throw, um, Sentences that we feel may be incorrect, but are actually correct. For example, fresh water being wasted, right? Again, you, you won't hear this um, in a casual conversation like we're talking right now. You will hear that they cut out ox verbs in written communication or newspapers mm -hmm. or in the news, in the TV or in emails or scientific papers to make it shorter, mm -hmm. to make it easier to read. Mm -hmm. Not so much in regular communication, but written, yes. Too much trash okay. being created, parks being lost, newspapers being thrown away, right? So when you see the headlines of a newspaper, mm -hmm. you will see um people losing their homes you won't read people mm -hmm. are losing their homes people losing their homes right um mm -hmm. schools are schools being shut down instead of are being shut down um mm -hmm. everyone to be vaccinated instead of everyone needs to be vaccinated mm -hmm. right you get what i mean mm -hmm. do you understand why they do this? Yes. Good. I see someone in the chat. Let me see. Yes. Awesome. So it's not really something you would use in a regular conversation. It's more for written communication. Okay. All right. We have an exercise, a listening exercise that we will use to connect the last two topics. Vamos a conectar the environmental topics with the auxiliaries and the prepositions and the passive voice. So we will start by listening. We will listen to each of the audios, come back to the exercise, choose the right answer, and then continue with the audio again. Listen to three people describe some serious environmental problems. Write each problem in the chart. One, Jenny. You know, I've been reading a lot about the problem of landfills, and it really has me worried. Why? Well, it seems that the easiest way of disposing of trash is by burying it in landfills. The problem is that in many countries, the landfills have already been filled up and it's hard to find places to start new ones. 
No one wants a huge landfill anywhere near their neighborhood. So what's the solution? Well, there is no easy solution. But many cities are trying to do more recycling so that they can reduce the amount of stuff that goes into the landfills. Two. All right. So what was Jenny talking about? Landfills. Landfills. And do you know what a landfill yeah. is? Who can tell me what a landfill is? All right, so a land it's like a, a field with grass, a, no? No, a landfill is a space of land where typically municipalities, cities, or countries, in the case of the United States, which is so big, um, throw their trash. So you might have heard for example, or their excess of trash. You might have heard, for example, about the massive landfill that was almost the size of um, Greenland, of a continent, um, or of an island. Um, it grew over time. So it went from being an island to Greenland and then to the size of a continent. Um, so these landfills get uh, so filled up with trash that they get to a point that you cannot throw trash in there anymore. So that's why Jenny talks about countries or cities recycling, because you don't have any space to throw the garbage at anymore. You have to do something with trash, recycle it, reuse it, or whatever. So a landfill is a place where the cities or municipalities or whatever will throw their trash and unfortunately it contaminates. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's a landfill. All right, let's do number two. Adam. I can't believe it's become dangerous to get a suntan. What is this world coming to? Well, the sun has never been good for you, but it's really dangerous now. You see, the ozone layer, which helps protect us from the sun's ultraviolet rays, has been damaged by pollution in the air. When the ozone layer gets too thin, it can cause an increase in skin cancer and other problems. But is there anything we can do to solve the problem? Sure. One of the biggest threats to the ozone layer is cars, the exhaust gases from cars. The best way to save the ozone layer is to drive less. So in many places, people are being asked to carpool. Three. Okay. What's the problem that Adam is talking about? Ozone layer. This is the thinning of the ozone layer. The thinning of the ozone layer. Yes. Exactly. The thinning of the ozone layer. So people are being asked to carpool. So mm -hmm. to uh, take your friends to work or take your, I don't know, neighbor to work so mm -hmm. that you only use one car. Yes. Right. Yes. You know. So the car. I'm sorry. No, no, no teacher. Nothing. Okay. nothing. <laughs> All right, no worries. Let's I'm do on the microphone. <laughs> no worries. Let's do the last one. Okay. We'll reload it. Get stuck. That's okay. All waste products more care. There Three. Katie. You know, you always hear about air pollution, but not many people are aware of the problem of water pollution. You mean in the oceans? No, I mean polluted drinking water. It's a problem in almost every major city in the world. Almost all our rivers and lakes, where we get our drinking water from, are being polluted in some way by businesses, farms, homes, 
industries, and other sources. And even though the water most of us drink is treated, it's still not 100% pure. So what's the solution? Well, it's a complicated problem to solve. But basically what's involved is treating all waste products more carefully so that dangerous chemicals and bacteria don't get into our water supply. All right, what's the problem Katie's talking about? Water pollution. Water pollution. Water, water pollution. pollution. Big problem. Let's review. Yes. You are right. So water pollution happens a lot here, right? You remember, like, I don't know if that was like a year or no, that was more than a year ago, like three years ago that Anda had to do some stuff because the water was like smelling really bad. So happens a lot, right? Yes. Yes. That was bad, right? That was bad. Mm -hmm. All right. So how do we give solutions to problems? Let's say that someone came to you with a problem. You want to be able to answer them and to help them. So you can have some vocabulary to help them with their problems and address their issue. Esta es una expresión bien común. Address their issue. So address, you know, where you live, but in this mm -hmm. context, in this context, you use address your issue, meaning to uh, focus on the issue, to uh, try to solve the issue, to talk about the issue, focus on it, right? So if I say, okay, give me a minute and I'll address your issue. So I'll give my attention and I'll put my efforts into solving your issue, right? Let me address it. Mm, but but sometimes when a people are, for example, in a presentation, just hey, in this time I need to uh, talk about that that issue, but not just the address the issue, but the issue because it's it's important focus please here. Oh yeah, it's but, not uh, necessary to say address. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's not necessary. It's just an expression uh, that you could hear a lot and. Uh, it might be useful for you to know that they're not talking about like a house address, right? Okay, but but the current the current form is added. For example, if when I talk with this, with someone, okay, I say hey the issue because for example it's, it's normal we use the the word issue, but in United States the normal must be no yes must be a address address the the issue address the issue. If, um, is I talk with the American people? Um, it's not that's normal because you could use a lot of words. So you can say uh, address your issue, um, handle your issue or your problem. Let me um, go over your issue, problem or problem. So they won't use address or specifically it's just mm -hmm. one of the possible things that they could say it's not a rule or anything they they don't do it uh -huh. by default it's just they might say it okay mm -hmm. okay thank you all right you also need to remember like tener en cuenta that the united states is such a big country mm -hmm. someone in california could have completely different expressions than someone from New York, right? So mm -hmm. they have different expressions to say the same stuff. Okay. Me personally, I learned mm -hmm. um, English with some um, California people. So my accent mm -hmm. is very West Coast. Um, so if you hear someone from, I don't know, what, Maine or New York and that, mm -hmm zone it mm -hmm. they might sound very different than i do if you hear someone from man if you hear someone from texas they might sound very different than i do so different accents different expressions all right yeah but, but you know i like it that the pronunciation that that england the britain 
Yeah, the British. <laughs> but I like it. But difficult. I don't know how. So good. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. 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 You know what pronunciation is difficult? Um, Indian pronunciation. Uh -huh. yeah, that's difficult. Yeah. yeah. Listen to yeah. it. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so let's listen to some vocabulary on how to solve problems. Are you able to give solution to problems? Listen to the conversation and find out about the problem Carla and Andy talk about and what solutions they come up with. Look at all those dead fish. What do you think happened? Well, there's a factory outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. How can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, it is, but a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. What if that doesn't work? Well, then, another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story on it. Yes, companies hate bad publicity. By the way, what's the name of this company? It's called Apex Industries. Oh, no. My uncle is one of their top executives. <laughs> what do Andy and Carla decide to do? Wait a minute. Before we do anything, shouldn't we make sure that we've got our facts straight? Absolutely. The best thing to do is to monitor the situation over the next several weeks to see what exactly is happening. How do we do that? Well, we can take pictures of the river and even take water samples to see how bad the situation is. We can get some friends to help. Okay. And maybe I could talk to my uncle about it. Oh, no. I don't think that's a good idea. Not yet, anyway. Why not? I don't think we want to say anything to anyone until we have a clearer picture of what is going on. After we've monitored the situation for a while, then we can decide whether we need to have a meeting with a representative of the company to tell them what we've discovered. Okay, Carla? Okay. Before we do anything, so they decided to do a couple things, right? They are going to do, they're going to get their facts straight. So they're going to make sure that they're telling the same story. Um, they're going to go and get some water samples to make sure mm -hmm. that it is contaminated. What else are they going to do? Uh, take take a, a, take some pictures. pictures. Uh huh. Pictures. And uh huh. And she talked about that. Talk with with her uncle, but he told her that no, because maybe not right now. Kind of. Yeah, because he works there, right? So we don't want to uh bring up any red flags. All right, good. So mm -hmm. as you can see, when you bring up solutions. We want to talk about uh, what we can do about it, right? So we can do this, we can do that, we can schedule. You do you know what scheduling is? A schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a, uh, horarios. It could be right. We could be. It, it can stand for horarios. But if I say, um, let's schedule a meeting. What would you think that it means? Ah, uh, like appointment. Like an appointment, exactly. Calendarizar. Calendarizar, that's a good synonym, right? Exactly. So we can schedule a meeting, we can collect proof, uh, but this is vocabulary specifically maybe for this situation, right? Every situation would have a different result. Are there any words in this reading that you may not know? All right. So when we continue with the topic of solutions, we have the topic of infinitive clauses and phrases. When we talk about uh, additional ways or additional phrases, I want to review specifically and phrases. these examples. 
is that we have the vocabulary as one thing we can do about it, a few ways to stop this R or a few things that we can do about this R, the best practice or the best thing to do is. So uh, let's listen to these examples. Pay attention and take notes. Infinitive clauses and phrases. One thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. Another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story. The best ways to fight HIV AIDS are to do more research and educate people. Let's go back and notice the expressions used on the grammar box. One thing, another way, the best ways. With these expressions, we must continue using one way plus infinitive plus is or are plus infinitive. For example, one way to help the homeless is to build more public housing. Now that you have learned to example, let's go back to what the infinitives are. Can you tell me what the infinitive is in this sentence? Housing? To help. And to, to help build. and to build. There we go. To help. To build. Why is this uh, an infinitive? Yes. Yes. So yes. 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 Exactly. Because yeah. you build it <laughs> with two. Yeah. The verb is not modified in and of itself. You will hear that expression sometimes. Esa es una expresión que a mí me gusta. Um, that something is not affected in and of itself, just to mean that something's not affected. It, it's something else that's happening. That's me. No, don't pay attention. Um, so the infinitive or the verb to help is the infinitive. The verb itself is not modified or it's mm -hmm. not in a single tense to say it could be helping, it could be helped, it could be, um, yeah. But we are not putting any tense to the verb. We are just adding to, okay. as to mean that it's an infinitive. So one way to help mm -hmm. homeless is to build more public housing. It doesn't have a specific time frame. It's not mm -hmm. telling you that you need to build this housing tomorrow, that it needed to be built yesterday, that it needs to be built next month. It's just mm -hmm. saying that it can help to build more housing. Yes, one way to help. Mm -hmm. Right. No specific mm -hmm. time frame. That's the thing about infinitives. Yes. It can happen at any time. All right. Yes. Any questions with the infinitives and how to form them? No. No, teacher. Sorry. All good. <clears throat> cool. Then we will do the knowledge check. Let me clear the screen. All right. So we will find solutions to the problems. One way to reduce famine is, do you know what famine is? Famine. Ooh, no. no. No, no, teacher. Famine is hambruna. Hambruna. That's right. Uh, that's right. So famine is a very, a very deep word, right? A very difficult word. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it, it'll be hambruna, but that's what it is. And famine actually comes from French, but we're not going to get into that. It comes from a French word. It's just a fun fact for you. Um, so one way to reduce famine or extreme hunger is, is to, build more to train people, people in modern, in modern farming, farming method. method. Yes. The second yes. one. Yes. And that would be mod modern, right? With an N at the, uh, at the end. So yes, to train people in modern farming methods. That has become very popular to harvest your own food. Number two, the best way to fight HIV AIDS is 
What do you think? Educate people on the street. Educate people. Educate people. To educate people to... Do you think? Do you all agree? What's the meaning of the HIV AIDS? VIH SIDA. Oh. Oh, uh, the third one, the the third one to start the best way to fight uh, a HIV AIDS is to start free vocational training programs. All right, let's oh. vote. Why don't we vote? So um, this vocational trainings is number three and educating people is number four. Put down in the chat if you think it's number three or number four. All right, have one number four, two number four, three number four, four number four, 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 four. One number three. All right, so we'll put down number four, another number four, and we'll see how we'll do. We'll review the answers. But vocational, vocational is, is, isn't it when you are going to the, I don't know, to the university or something, the, uh, to, to choose your career or something like that? Yes. What is, this, I don't know, that doesn't right. make sense for but... Yeah. So it's kind of like when you get habilitación laboral here. Yes. So vocational is um, vocational training. You get a little bit of coaching on labors. So not jobs, but occupations. For example, carpentry, carpintería, um, metal work, aprender to weld, a, a, a soldar, right? And manual work, um, <coughs> cleaning, etc. So the logic answer, now that we know what vocational is, would be to educate people on the street. Good work, right? Let's go to number three. One way to stop political unrest is... So when we talk about political unrest, mm. we're talking a little bit about- I don't um, know what the meaning or political unrest. Right. To, to provide way, a way for people to voice they for themselves. Right, so when you are- um, Yes, to provide ways for people to voice their concern. Right, because when there's political unrest, it means to have political uncertainty or political insecurity where you feel that your concerns are not being addressed by the people in power or by the political figures. You think that uh, what you need help with, they're not taking into account. So let's go for this answer. Nice work. So number four, one thing to improve air quality is to develop, to develop clean yes. public transportation. To develop clean public transportation. transportation. Yes. Right. To develop cleaner transportation. The best way to reduce poverty is Just to start, start free vocational training programs. Yeah. That is right. So people, even if you didn't have the privilege of studying, you now are able to work. So you start free vocational training programs. And finally, number six, one thing to help the homeless is? To build more, to build more public, public houses. House. Housing, that's right. To build more public housing so they have more shelters 
or even better than a shelter, right? Houses provided uh, by support systems, not necessarily the government, but support systems that uh, sometimes are charitable. Charitable, caricativos. There yes. we go. We are absolutely right because we are great. All right. You see that we completed section number two. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any last questions about this section? We've reviewed uh, the prepositions of causation, how to uh, explain why something happened. We have also reviewed how to talk a little bit about solving those problems. Um, and we also reviewed passive voice. So we learned how to switch those sentences in case you're doing like a more professional document. Um, any final questions for this lesson? Everything is okay. If there are no other questions, I know it's nine o'clock, so I will let you rest. And today is the last day of this week. So I will see everyone on Monday. Have a happy weekend. Happy weekend. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.